Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on converting hydrophone output voltage to pressure. We'll begin by considering the transduction process that occurs within a hydrophone when it's used to measure an ultrasonic signal. When we connect a hydrophone to a data acquisition device, such as an oscilloscope, the waveform we measure is the hydrophone output voltage. This in turn depends upon the hydrophone system transfer function and the incident pressure waveform that the hydrophone experiences. And these two quantities are convolved together. If we wish to recover the incident pressure waveform from the measured hydrophone output voltage, we need to be able to deconvolve the hydrophone system transfer function. Let's look at that voltage to pressure conversion process. Starting with our convolutional description, we take Fourier transforms. Here, capital letters are used to indicate Fourier transformed frequency domain versions of the time domain quantities. One of the advantages of the Fourier transform is that it allows us to replace a time domain convolution with multiplication in the frequency domain. And therefore, to extract the pressure spectrum, we simply need to take the ratio of the voltage spectrum and the sensitivity spectrum. Finally, by taking the inverse Fourier transform, we can recover the incident pressure waveform. Let's look in a little more detail at the hydrophone sensitivity function. Here, the subscript L has been used to indicate we are talking about an end of cable loaded hydrophone sensitivity. There is an additional PA tutorial on oscilloscope impedance and hydrophone measurements if you're interested. This is a complex valued quantity and therefore comprises two components, a magnitude response and a phase response. Historically, hydrophone calibrations were often provided magnitude only. However, in the last decade and a half, there are an increasing number of institutions capable of providing phase response as well. Examples of such institutions are the National Physical Laboratory in the UK, PTB in Germany, NIM in China, and NMIJ in Japan. All of these are primary standard hydrophone calibration facilities capable of producing magnitude and phase response calibrations. Let's just recap. Our hydrophone deconvolution equation was discovered earlier. There's also considerable information which can be found regarding this in IEC 62127 part one. This standard deals with the use of hydrophones for the measurement of ultrasonic fields. Specifically, clause 5.1 and Annex D contain a lot of useful information. Let's have a practical example of hydrophone deconvolution. Here, we have a diagnostic ultrasound waveform that has been measured with three different hydrophones. For ease of visualization, they have been normalized to their peak positive excursion. However, it's worth noting that the raw voltage waveforms are nearly an order of magnitude difference in size due to the sensitivities of the different hydrophones. There are considerable variations between the three traces, but of critical importance is the change in the peak negative excursion. This peak negative excursion eventually relates to peak negative pressure and peak rarefied fractional pressure is of critical importance when determining the output of a diagnostic ultrasound machine. In this case, we can see the variation is up to 25%. Once we have deconvolved the hydrophone responses, we obtain these three waveforms. As you can see, there is much closer similarity between the three, and critically, that important quantity of peak rarefactional pressure now has a variation of only 8%. It's also important to note that IEC 62127 part one 
contains another means of converting voltage to pressure, but only when we are subject to narrowband conditions. Consider a hydrophone sensitivity function as shown. Once we've made a measurement of an acoustic signal, we can determine its acoustic working frequency. And from this, we can then determine two other frequencies of note. The frequency at half the value of the acoustic working frequency, and an upper frequency point, which is the minimum of either 40 MHz or eight times the acoustic working frequency. We can also determine the sensitivity of the hydrophone at the acoustic working frequency of the source. And from this, we can specify two levels that are plus or minus 3 dB either side of this. The narrow band condition requires that within the frequency range from half of the acoustic working frequency to the minimum of 40 megahertz or eight times the acoustic working frequency, there is no more than plus or minus 3 dB variation in the hydrophone's response, where the zero reference point is taken as the sensitivity at the acoustic working frequency. This sounds like a lot of work, but let's consider why. If we are able to use the narrowband approximation, we can simply obtain the pressure waveform by dividing the voltage waveform by the sensitivity at the acoustic working frequency. However, this is only for narrowband signals. Further information can be found in IEC 62127 part one, clause 5.1.6. So to conclude, hydrophone deconvolution is the most general method to convert hydrophone voltage to pressure. The narrowband approximation may only be used if the strict narrowband conditions are met. We hope you found this interesting. If you did, come back and find some more of the Precision Acoustics tutorial videos.